nature is dynamic and ever changing complex. Many observations of natural changes long ago have resulted in the concept of ecological succession. Bare land slowly gets covered with vegetation and its associated animal life. The vegetation that initially develops on a piece of bare land is gradually replaced by a second type of vegetation which crowds out the first type. But even this second type of vegetation is replaced by a third and so on. In the areas where such stages of replacement occurs, it has been found that communities of living organisms that is plants and animals also replace one another in a very systematic, predictable and orderly sequence. This process of community change is known as ecological succession. In other words, it can also be said as development of different communities and different types of communities of living organisms one after the other in a given area during the course of a time. The term ecological succession was first of all used by Hult in 1955 during the study of community of southern Sweden. But a clear cut concept of succession was developed by botanists Warming in 1896 and Cowles in 1899. In India, studies of ecological succession have been made by uh, Ranganathan, Mishra, Suri, Champion, Pandey and Sharma. Important causes of ecological succession are topographic, climatic and biotic. Fluctuating or unfavorable climatic conditions causes partial or total destruction of vegetation and as a result bare land or bare area develops. Drought, extreme snowfall and lightning are important factors of climate that cause destruction of vegetation. Among the topographic causes are erosion of soil and deposition of soil which are important factors. Sometimes upper fertile soil is removed by the action of wind and water. This is called soil erosion. As a result of soil erosion, bare area is exposed where succession starts. Soil deposition results through heavy storms, glaciers, snowfall and landslides. If deposition of soil takes place over an area covered with vegetation, the plants occurring there may be destroyed or suppressed. This soil deposition results in a new bare area on which succession initiates. Many biological agencies also affect the vegetation in many ways. Grazing, cutting, cultivation, harvesting and deforestation are all caused by biological or living agencies and are directly responsible for either vegetation change or destruction. Many parasitic plants and animals also destroy the vegetation. As a result, bare area is formed. Succession occurring over a bare area, which was not previously occupied by vegetation, is called primary succession. Succession occurring on rocky surfaces, sandy layer and in ponds and lakes are common examples of primary succession. However, when succession occurs over an area initially colonized by vegetation but destroyed due to some reason, it is called secondary succession. Succession taking place on abandoned farmland, strip mines, roadsides and landfill areas represent secondary succession. Succession characterized by early and continued dominance by autotropic organisms is called autotropic succession. But when heterotropic organisms are dominating, 
then it is referred to as heterotropic succession. In succession, when organisms react with the environment and change it, causing their own replacement by new communities, it is called autogenic succession. However, when the replacement of existing community is caused by external conditions and not by the existing community, then it is called allogenic succession. The process of ecological succession involves the sequential stages called nudation, invasion, competition and reaction, and stabilization or climax. Nudation is the basic process of succession. And here, formation of bare area takes place. There are many reasons responsible for bare area formation, like landslides, soil erosion, flooding, long and continuous drought, volcanic eruption, deposition, fire, and diseases. During invasion, Plants and animals from surrounding areas reach the bare area, establish there, and aggregate by the way of reproduction. The seeds, spores, and other propagules of organisms reach the bare area by the agency of air, water, and animals, and the whole process is called migration or dispersal. Migrated plant species try to establish in a new area by the way of germination of seed, seedling growth, vegetative growth, flowering and fruiting. Plant species that are successful in fruiting establish there, while unsuccessful species disappear. The successful establishment of species in bare areas is called as ascesis. Ascesis involves germination, growth and reproduction. After successful establishment, species increase their number by reproduction, forming large populations and this phenomenon is called aggregation. When population increases in a limited bare area, struggle or competition for nutrients and space starts among them. This struggle may be inter or intraspecies. Due to this struggle and other abiotic and biotic interactions, the environment starts getting modified gradually and becomes unsuitable for the existing species which are sooner or later replaced by a new species. In the modified environmental condition, new communities of species enter the area and start competing with the previously existing species. Due to the new suitable species, the previously present species either becomes subdominant or are eliminated. The addition of organic matter, moisture and minerals by small plants in the area again makes it suitable for larger plant species. Increased availability of food materials allows carnivore animals and birds to join the community and in this way various communities are developed successively which is known as serial communities till a final stable community is developed which is called climax community. Ecologists are of the opinion that climax community is relatively more stable. The rate of succession changes is rapid or fast initially and gradually becomes slow. The process and early appearing species have a shorter life cycle while the later species have a longer life span. Hydrosphere. Succession in the hydrosphere has the following stages. 
phytoplankton stage. Depth of the water is 15 to 20 inches. Algae like Spirogyra and Chlormidomorus are common. Submerged stage. Depth of the water is almost 10 inches. Common plants like Hydrilla and Vallisneria are to be seen. When they die, the depth decreases due to the debris getting deposited at the bottom. Floating stage. Depth of the water is 2 to 5 inches. Plants like Pistia and Icorata grow here. On their death and deposition at the bottom of the lake, the depth decreases, making way for another stage, that is, the reed swarm stage or amphibious stage. Reed swarm or amphibious stage In the reed swamp or amphibious stage, Depth of water is up to 2 inches. Common plants are typha and phragmites. When they die, they are succeeded by marsh meadow stage. Marsh meadow stage Marsh meadow stage occurs when the water is hardly 1 to 2 inches deep. Here, the soil is marshy and is invaded by many plant species like Juncus, Carex, Polygonum and Eleocaris. All these plants react with the habitat and make it suitable for the forthcoming woodland stage. Woodland stage has shrubs and trees. Plants that can tolerate waterlogged conditions invade and survive here. Examples of plant species Present at the stage are Salix, Cornus, Cephalanthus, Alnus, and Populus. These plants, by their reaction, make the soil unsuitable for woodland plants themselves and suitable for forest trees and shrubs. The Climax Stage the moist soil of the woodland stage, enriched with bacteria, fungi and other organisms, is invaded by forest trees and shrubs, forming the climax stage. After a few generations, the most tolerant species survive and gradually, pure forest is established. Thus, the area once covered by deep water is now changed into a forest. During the hydrosphere, the changing plant stages also see simultaneous changes in animal types. Protozoans like Paramecium, Euglenas and Amoeba form the pioneer stage. Abundant plankton growth supports bluegill fish or lepomis and sunfish or micropters. With submerged vegetation, dragonflies and a few crustaceans inhabit the plants. Hydra, gill-breathing snails, frogs, diving beetles, whirling beetles, and other insects which utilize the undersurface of leaves associate with the floating stage. Different kinds of turtles and snakes are also found with this stage. Animals that can live with emergent plants appear with the reed swamp stage. Different species of many flies and dragonflies spend their nymphal stage on submerged plant stem and climb to the surface when they are ready to emerge as adults. Gill breathing organisms are replaced by lung breathing organisms. Among insects, water scorpion, giant water bug and scavenger beetles are also present. 
Amnalid worms colonize the bottom. Some birds also become common to the area. In marshmallow stage, the pond becomes a temporary pond which may dry up in summer. So, only those animals are present which can withstand drying in summer and freezing in winter. Like snails, beavers and flashes are gradually excluded. Plants of marsh meadow stage are replaced by woody forest and accordingly there is a change in animal life also. Terrestrial forms now occupy the habitat. Thus a lake gets converted to a forest through succession. That is why there is a popular saying, a lake begins to die the moment it is born. When succession starts at a very dry place where there is extreme shortage of water, it is known as Zirarch and with different stages of development, it is known as Zero Seer. Zero Seer is completed with pioneer lichen, folios lichen, moss, herbaceous plants, shrubs and climax stages. Over rocky surface, where most conditions are unsuitable for the growth of most plants, few blue-green algae and crustose lichens inhabit, forming the pioneer stage. Blue-green algae like Skytonema are found to adhere to the rocky surface by their mucilaginous sheath. The algae tolerate all extreme conditions and utilize atmospheric nitrogen. Usually, at high altitudes, where climate is cooler, crustose lichens like Rhizocarpon and Renodina are common pioneers. Lichens produce some acids which cause weathering of rocks. Weathering of rocks form small particles which mix with dead remains of algae and lichen forming a thin moist layer on the rocky surface. Over this moist layer, folios lichens can grow successfully, constituting the second stage. As soon as a little soil is accumulated on the rocky surface, some folios lichens like Dermatocarpon, Parmelia and Umbilicaria grow there. Folios lichens slowly replace the crustose lichens by making an overshadow over crustose lichen by the thalia. By death and decay of thalia or folios lichens, weathering of rock and collection of dust particles by wind, more soil is formed over which moss stage occurs. Most xerophytic mosses like Polytrichum, Tortula and Grimia make an appearance. Sometimes folios lichen and mosses exist together. But later on, mosses completely replace the folios lichens. Mosses also increase the amount of soil and by their death and decay, a mat-like cover is formed over rocky surfaces. This cover can hold sufficient amount of water and, with soil particles, it is suitable for growth and development of herbaceous plants. In the herbaceous stage, annual, biennial and perennial herbs make their appearance. For example, poa and festuca. The process of rock disintegration and accumulation of humus and nutrients are greatly accelerated. Herbaceous plants, now shaded, tend to disappear and these plants are replaced by shrub plants of the shrub stage. These shrubs may start from seeds or invade from surrounding area by rhizomes. These make the conditions unsuitable for herbs and overshadow them. The shade of shrubby plants 
also controls the evaporation of water from soil and wind movement. Humus and humidity increase. This favors the growth of tree seedlings that form the climax stage. First, some xeric species of tree appear, which later on give place to mesophytic tree species. These mesophytic tree species increase both in number and vigor, and ultimately, a forest is formed. The ecosystem consists of two parts. The first, abiotic or non-living, including soil, atmosphere, climate, water and natural forces. Second, biotic or living. This includes organisms like plants and animals. In the living part of the ecosystem, all organisms have different feeding status, known as tropic levels. There are five tropic levels. Tropic level 1. This includes all green plants. Tropic level 2. This includes all types of herbivores. Tropic level 3. This consists of carnivores which eat herbivores. Tropic level 4. This consists of carnivores which eat carnivores of the lower tropic level. Hence, they are called top carnivores. Tropic level 5. All decomposers constitute this level. The arrangement of all tropic levels is represented by food chains food web, and the ecological pyramids. Food chain is the linear arrangement of tropic levels, where a series of organisms pass energy from one to another as each provides food to the next level. Food chains are classified into two types. Herbivorous grazing chain and detritus grazing chain. Herbivorous grazing chain. The herbivorous grazing chain always starts with green plants where whole plants or parts of the plant is used as food. Different types of habitats have different types of organisms, so the food chain is also of various types forest, croplands, grasslands, deserts, rivers, lakes and oceans all have different types of food chains. Some common examples are forest, ground plants feed the deer which in turn are food for the fox. Foxes are eaten by lions. Ground plants are eaten by rabbits. Rabbits are food for the jackal. The jackal may be eaten by lions. Crop plants are consumed by rodents, which are eaten by snakes. In turn, snakes may be eaten by various kinds of birds, like the peacock kite or the hawk. Crop plants are eaten by insects which in turn are food for the frog. The frog is eaten by the snake which in turn is eaten by birds. Grass plants are eaten by grasshoppers which may be eaten by a bird. Grass plants are eaten by grasshoppers which may be eaten by a lizard and the lizard may be food for a hawk. Grass plants are eaten by rodents. Rodents are eaten by snakes. Snakes may be eaten by the peafowl. 
grass plants are eaten by rabbits, which in turn may be eaten by a jackal or a wolf. Rivers and streams Smaller water plants are eaten by herbivorous fish. The fish are eaten by carnivorous fish. Carnivorous fish are food for the duck. The detritus grazing chain always starts with dead organic matter or decaying matter. Dead organic matter is consumed by earthworms, which in turn is eaten by frogs. The frogs are food for the snake, which in turn is food for the peafowl. In the ecosystem, food chains are interconnected with one another, forming interlocking patterns. Food web is a net or web-like trophic interrelationship. Food web provides stability to the ecosystem as the number of organisms is controlled through a network in which one organism consumes the other. Ecological pyramids are graphic or diagrammatic representations of different trophic levels with autotrophs or green plants at the base with herbivores and carnivores being placed above them. Ecological pyramids are represented in terms of numbers, biomass and energy and hence the different types of ecological pyramids are pyramid of numbers, pyramid of biomass and pyramid of energy. Pyramid of numbers The pyramid of numbers shows the relationship between the primary producers, herbivores and carnivores at successive tropic levels in terms of their numbers. These pyramids are upright or inverted. In grasslands, there are maximum numbers of grass plants but successively, numbers of herbivores and carnivores decreases. Hence, the pyramid is upright. In forests, the pyramid of numbers is rhomboid shaped, but in tree ecosystem, the pyramids are always inverted. This is due to the fact that a single plant may support the growth of many herbivores and each herbivore provides nutrition to several parasites. For example, a tree provides nutrition to several parrots and each parrot in turn provides nutrition to lice or other parasites. Pyramids of Biomass Pyramids of biomass are more fundamental, showing a quantitative relationship of the biomass in producers herbivores and carnivores. In forest and grasslands, there is a gradual decrease in biomass at successive levels from producers to top carnivores. So, in forest and grasslands, pyramids are upright. In the case of a pond, producers are very small organisms with lower value of biomass. But this value gradually increases, making the pyramid inverted. Pyramid of Energy The pyramid of energy is always upright because there is a gradual decrease in energy content at successive tropic levels from the producers to consumers. The pyramid of energy represents the total quantity of energy used by different tropic levels of organisms of an ecosystem per unit area over a set period of time. In this way, ecological succession takes place in ecology and food chains, food webs and ecological pyramids play their role in maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. Each organism is interdependent with the other 
thus forming an essential link in the natural cycle. The absence of a single link in the cycle will destroy the natural cycle and thus the ecology resulting in utter chaos and destruction of the ecology. It is therefore important to understand each link that is represented by the organisms and respect them for the role that they play in the entire natural cycle.